Uh, so my name is Rebecca Notini. I am interested in emergency medicine and I am about to start my fourth year of medical school in two weeks. My main form of exercise is powerlifting. start to get involved in like powerlifting or sort of any sport in general? So I think I always played sports. Mm -hmm. You know, in high school, I was just on a lot of different sports teams. Um, never really that good at anything, <laughs> but I just loved it. And then college, I sort of transitioned to, mostly I, I started running, um, which I never loved running, but I did it because I, I always felt like I had to do something. Mm -hmm. I feel like exercise is always a part of my life and that was the easiest way for me to fit it into my college schedule. Um, and it wasn't actually until I graduated college and I took a gap year. Um, my parents and some of my siblings, I, I went home to live with my parents and they were doing CrossFit at the time. Mm -hmm. And I had never really heard of it or like what I did hear about it was pretty negative. <laughs> and so I was like, whatever, I'll give it a shot because everyone else is doing it. Um, and it was it was like the first time I was introduced to like working with a barbell and feeling comfortable with a barbell in my hands mm -hmm. and like so many different movements that I'd never been introduced to before in my life. Um, it was also, I think, one of the first times that I was introduced to, like, the concept of women being strong, which mm -hmm. was, I don't know why, like, my whole life I kind of thought, like, you had to do cardio as a woman, like, subconsciously I think I had that in my mind, but then I met all these, like, really strong women, and it was kind of empowering and cool to be part of that. Mm -hmm. um, and just like a super fun environment of like working out with friends and family. Um, and I actually continued CrossFit for like, I guess that was like maybe three years into medical school, even into my second year of medical school. But then when I started clinicals, it became pretty difficult to make it to like scheduled CrossFit um, class times. And so... I had to sort of adapt and find a way that I could continue to work out and do what I love, but be able to like go to go to school every day. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know how you feel about that. Um, so you're saying like, I feel like with CrossFit, I'm I don't know too much about it, but I do feel like you have to work out a lot, like if you want to be really good at CrossFit. So how, like I guess before clinical started, how often were you? Uh, training in CrossFit? Yeah, um, I think it depended how busy I was. I Usually it was like three times a week. Mm -hmm. um, and then at times when I wasn't as busy, it was five days a week. Okay. Um, and I do agree, like you can go to CrossFit and you can be super casual about it and no one like looks down on you for that. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to be good and you want to get those movements down that like only like elite people can do, then mm -hmm. you you do have to be going like most days of the week and staying after to work on your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of like a pick your, pick your adventure type of thing where you can be pretty casual, but you can also like put your whole life into it. How would you describe your schedule during first and second year? Like how did you balance um, that pre-clinical pre studying with 
training in CrossFit? Like what was your normal day like if you were going to be training? Yeah, so I guess the, the gym I went to for CrossFit was in downtown, which was maybe like a five minute walk from the medical school. Mm -hmm. So that made it pretty easy to... Which gym was it? Uh, it's called Top Tier Fitness. Okay, nice. I know that gym because I, when I was applying to be a personal trainer at the Y, I also reached out to them just in case. But they, they had enough personal trainers though. Oh. <laughs> but um, I'm not sure if it would have worked out in the end because the Y I could train in whatever style, but I think you kind of have to be like CrossFit, CrossFit to train with them. But yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, I think I've driven by there. They have like a pretty cool facility. Yeah, it's kind of, it's cool. They have like two floors and they have like different styles on each floor. Like uh, the bottom floor is more traditional CrossFit and the top floor is um, a little more adapted to be like more cardio focused, mm -hmm. uh, less barbell movements. So that's also kind of cool because you can sort of pick different styles in that as well. Mm -hmm. So you were saying it's like, so it's five minutes away. So I guess that, that was convenient because the gym was really close to the medical school. Um, so how, how would your day look like? Like, would you study in the morning and then train in the afternoon or vice versa? What, what was that like? Yeah. So if sometimes it depended on the day, um, the classes I normally like to go to for CrossFit were at noon or like four or 5 PM. Um, and so sometimes I would like, uh, go to our morning classes for school and it would be like, 8 a.m. to noon, but I would just like leave 10 minutes early. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I to could make like it for the class. <laughs> so I could get to the CrossFit class. Um, and then sometimes we didn't always have things in the afternoon, or if we did, I would just be like a couple minutes late to it. Um, mm -hmm. But what I what I did like about the CrossFit classes is that they're just one hour, so it's limited to like that one hour of time that you can kind of just fully dedicate yourself. And then after that, you can just go do whatever else. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I normally like went either like noon to one or if we had like more of a rigorous like class day where things were getting out later, um, then I would more st go to like the four or five o'clock class. Mm -hmm. And then I still did have like time to study in the evenings um, because it wasn't taking up like four hours of my day. It's just like one hour. And I feel like you can dedicate one hour to working out a day. Oh yeah, for sure. Do you feel like um, training uh, CrossFit like helped you in other aspects of life, like sleep, uh, mental health, or even your studies? Um, Cause I know sometimes if I would train, I would actually feel like I'm too tired to study. Cause you know, I would try and go all out and I'm sure there are some CrossFit sessions where you like probably went all out, but so how do you feel that overall like impacted medical school, your studies and, and all of that? Yeah, well, I think there's always a balance. Um, sometimes I do feel like I didn't study as much because I was too tired or because, you know, it was just a long day at the gym or something. Mm -hmm. um, and I think sometimes I did feel guilty about that because I was like, Am I like sacrificing my studies for like working out? And it was it was sort of a hard decision sometimes to be like, should I continue to do this? Like how often should I do it? Like what's more important? I also found that on the days I didn't work out, I just felt like really like lethargic or sluggish. Like it, if it had been like multiple days um, since I had worked out, I would just, I guess like feel bad because I felt like most of my time I was sitting in class mm -hmm. or sitting studying or sitting eating or like lying down in bed sleeping. And so there's not like much movement in that. Um, and it, it doesn't feel good. Like I don't think your body functions like it should when you're just sitting all the time. Yeah, I totally agree. It was, it was definitely important for me during pre clinicals to work out just to like change my setting and like do something active instead of hitting the space bar all day long. Totally. Um, so uh, I wanted to ask a question like about your studying, uh, I guess during preclinicals. Um, so what like basically like did you go to lecture? What sort of study methods did you, did you use? Because um, even though this like interview, you know, it's about um, 
kind of your training and stuff, it's also how to balance that with medical school. So I'm always interested in how students try and like study efficiently and what their study methods are. So if you could share like how you studied um, and kind of what you prioritize when you were studying to like allow time to train. Sure. So I mainly went to lectures. I was like a strong lecture goer <laughs> the, oh, nice. the first two years. I feel like those people are far and few between. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know. I guess sometimes I debate whether that was worth it or not. Mm -hmm. like, so you, like you pretty much attended like every single lecture. Oh yeah, for the most part. Yeah, right up okay. until I think COVID, because then lectures were just online. Yeah. Um, that's actually really interesting. I I don't I I don't think I've talked to a classmate yet that's attended uh, lectures like that. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it was beneficial or if it changed mm -hmm. my I. Like, it's hard to look back and be like, what was the right thing to do? I don't know if there's a right thing to do, but I guess it, it worked out for me enough. Yeah, I mean, that's as long as it works out for you, I think that's really all that matters. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, do you feel like if you, since you went to in-person lecture, do you feel like you retained a lot of that material? Or did you feel like you still had to go back and like watch the lecture again? So if I went to lecture, I didn't usually go back and rewatch it unless it was like something super intense. Um, mm -hmm. What I did do is I had like a couple friends that I'd study with sometimes um, and we would just go over like the lecture slides together, but that would take like way shorter than rewatching the lecture. And I feel like you would actually be talking through things to understand them Yeah. instead of like you're just rewatching the same exact thing you've already seen which sometimes can be helpful, but I think for me to digest things, like talking through it is a lot more helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a big way that I studied, like study groups. Um, did I, you do like Anki practice questions or did you stay away from that? So with Anki, I actually was super anti-Anki. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My full two years and I've, I've like completely switched on that. Like I- use, Oh, you use it now? Yeah. Okay. Now for clinicals, it's like one of my main sources of studying. Yeah. Um, and I don't know why I was so against it. <laughs> <laughs> why, but, why were you? I'm just interested. Like what was, did you have like reservations about using it? Yeah, well, I guess I thought, how can you learn medicine through flashcards? Yeah. Because, <laughs> and I still think I'm still of the opinion that it's not extremely beneficial for clinical reasoning. However, it gets you better grades, I think, just because it's these little details that yeah, like exactly. are on the tests. So. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Like clinical reasoning for sure. And like Anki should never be a learning tool. I think it's just a memorization tool. Mm -hmm. Like you have to learn the material first and then just to solidify those random little details, like what antibiotic to use here, or like what's the next biochemical pathway here, like Anki is good for those, like that, that type of stuff. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that's pretty interesting overall. Like I would say you might be in the minority of medical students like who, who attend every single lecture and don't use Anki. <laughs> but, pretty much. <laughs> but I mean, that goes to show like what whatever your study style is, as long as it works for you, that, that's really all that matters at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, okay, so you mentioned that your first kind of introduction to this type of training was with CrossFit, and then you said that when you got into clinicals, you you kind of had to shift the way you train. So if you could talk about that, um, like what what was your shift in training and, and maybe even like training frequency and stuff like that. Yeah, so it was actually it was a really hard decision because I had gotten to the point in CrossFit where I was, I was like getting movements that I had never been able to do before. Um, like my next progression for like pull-ups was like a muscle up, which muscle ups. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe like I could potentially get this. Um, and it was like something I was like really working towards. Mm -hmm. and was then, it on the rings or on a straight bar? Uh, I practice both. They, they do both in, in CrossFit, but I, I, did, I wasn't close to either of them, but I was like, I was getting there and it was, yeah. it was my goal. Like I had set that goal that I was going to do that this, this year. And uh -huh. that was, that was last year. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And so like the decision to stop, I guess, and switch kind of came from just not having time to make those those scheduled CrossFit class times. I looked at our schedule requirements for my first rotation, which was internal medicine, and the days were like 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah. And so in my mind, I was like, okay, so I can't even make it to like the 5.30 a.m. CrossFit class mm -hmm. because, or like even a 4.30 a.m. And then I was like, and then I'd have to go to like a 7 p.m. And then when would I sleep and when would I study? And so yeah, I just- that's really tough. Yeah, I just knew it wasn't gonna be feasible. And I knew that I was going to be like rushing out of my clinical responsibilities. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it wasn't gonna be feasible to continue CrossFit and so I, I guess I was just like thinking of different styles of working out I could do. And I knew like my fiance does um, Olympic weightlifting and he'd been doing that for a couple years and he trains like in our garage gym at mm -hmm. home. And so I was like, maybe it's time that like I switch to something like that too, <laughs> where I can work out at home um, and maybe like save a little money on like a gym membership. Oh yeah. Uh, but still like have a feasible way to exercise every single day or however many days a week I need to. I kind of, we did like some research on powerlifting coaches because um, I didn't really know anything about powerlifting at the time. Mm -hmm. But I knew it was something I wanted to work on because I guess I have always been like relatively weak um, just because I, I never worked on like power movements growing up yeah um do you feel like the crossfit helped with the transition though like oh yeah in terms of strength yes uh definitely and it also helped me like decide that i wanted to do powerlifting mm -hmm. because i was like the movements that i'm worst at in crossfit are like these strength movements mm -hmm. where i just can't lift as much as other people because i'm not as strong yeah and so I guess I, I like gravitated towards like that weakness that I had that I, I wanted to be better at it. I wanted to be stronger. Um, and so I found a coach who I felt like would be able to like create a schedule for me, a training schedule that was in line with what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been great ever since. It's been like, I think like a year since I started powerlifting now. Nice. Wait, so this coach, is it like an in-person coach or virtual? No, so it's it's virtual, I guess. It's, um, I guess the terminology we use is remote. Remote, okay. Yeah, so I'll like record all of my videos and sets mm -hmm. and like send him like some of my top sets are my best sets. Oh, nice. And he'll like evaluate them? Exactly. That's actually pretty cool. I. I mean, I did some virtual training when I was like during my leave of absence, but I never, it was like always live, mm -hmm. but that's a good way to have people like record themselves and then send it over. And so he, that coach, um, they like created your schedule basically like in, like did they plan everything out pretty much? Yeah, like every movement that I'm gonna do is in my schedule for the week, mm -hmm. um, and including the accessories and like how many sets and reps. And um, so sometimes he'll put like the weights in too, or sometimes he'll just be like, do a weight that feels like this heavy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so like sometimes there's some freedom in choosing that. And sometimes he's just like, you have to lift this weight. Yeah, you gotta do it. <laughs> yeah. which. It can take a lot of stress off of, like I don't know how to program for a power lifter. Um, and so it's nice to have someone who's kind of like got expertise in that and experience. Yeah, I can imagine, especially as a beginner, that's like an invaluable resource. Yeah. Because I spent so many years doing calisthenics incorrectly to then <laughs> teach myself how to do it correctly. And then another year to be able to confidently say like I can actually create a program mm -hmm. but yeah there's no way I could have done that as a beginner exactly. when I first started with my discipline but so do you feel like that was like I feel like that's an enormous time saver to just have every like workout set weight 
planned for you. Um, is that like how it felt for you? Like that it saved a lot of time in that respect? Oh yeah. And also it helps with the motivation. <laughs> yeah. Because I think, I think I've tried in the past at times to like make a program or uh, a workout schedule or training day for myself. And I think over time it becomes that you, you kind of like cheat yourself. <laughs> like if you're not feeling good one day, you're like, well, I'm just gonna like only do this easy movement yeah. that I'm good at. And then you're not like training, you're not training an effective way mm -hmm. towards your goals. And it, it keeps you accountable because I think, like I, I don't think I could go a week without doing all my programming <laughs> and like feel okay about that. Yeah. <laughs> like my coach would reach out to me and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, are you alive? Um, so it's great to not have to think about it and then to have that accountability. Yeah, no, that's fantastic, man. I, yeah, I've never been on the other side of like having a coach, but I can imagine it's an awesome feeling. Mm -hmm. And it's like the motivation is there. Cause yeah, one of the questions I was going to ask you, which you kind of answered now, but I was going to ask like, how do you maintain motivation and like what is your motivation going forward and then like for me it's i've made it such a habit that i need to like go at least three or four times a week even when i'm feeling like really shitty mm -hmm. um but it seems like part of your motivation is like the fact that you have a program to follow like it's kind of like at that point then you have no excuse because you have exactly what you need to do exactly <laughs> um but do you have like other sources of like internal motivation or external motivation like i guess what what keeps you like coming back to the program yeah and sometimes it's, it is really hard and sometimes you do just like take a day and you're like i can't do it today mm -hmm. um but i feel like another big thing um is that when i did get my coach he suggested that I sign up for a powerlifting meet, like a competition, which I'd never done before. I'd been to like tons of them because my fiance did like multiple like weightlifting and powerlifting competitions. Mm -hmm. um, and I was always there as like support, but to me, I was like, uh, I'm not strong enough to do that. <laughs> but he recommended that I just sign up for one. Um, just to kind of like get it under my belt and feel how it is and keep that motivation. And I was like, okay, but like, I don't think I'm gonna do that well. And then I actually did it like this past December and it was like the coolest experience yeah, ever. Yeah, I bet. That sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah, and it just like, right after I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, like I need to work on like this and this and this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that I can do better next time. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah. Did, like, did you do well in that first competition? Yeah, I think um, I hit pretty much as much weight in as I had. I lifted as much weight as I ever had in all of my lifts, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and I went for like PR attempts in all of them and I didn't get them, but... Mm -hmm. I would rather have done it that way. <laughs> yeah. I think it's always good to like go for it, you know, in a competition. I think that's the time to do it. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so my next question is if you could go into detail about like what your workout looks like, like not all your workouts, so maybe like, uh, like an one average day. day. Yeah, an average day, like what, how many reps and sets you're doing and what exercises are you doing? Totally. And you can go into like as much detail as you want about that. Okay, so I think pretty much most days I'm gonna do like squat, bench, and deadlift on like pretty much all my training days. I think there's like one day a week that I'm not squatting and one that I'm not like deadlifting. Mm -hmm. But right now as my program is, I'm benching every single day. And I think he's having me do it that way because it's my weakest thing. Mm -hmm. Um and also at the moment I'm on like a very high, uh, what's the word? Like volume of sets. Okay. So I think, let me think, I think like yesterday or Friday, let's say the, the other day I had like sets of three for squats, but it was like 
seven sets. <laughs> oh, dang. At, seven sets of three. Yeah, seven sets of three at like a, a really high percentage. It was like, I don't know, some somewhere around like 80, 85%. And so that was just like a lot of Wait, volume. when you say 85%, is that like, like of your max weight? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I didn't know that term in class. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, but that makes sense. Yeah. So essentially just like... This is like a different world for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Oh, right. Because you do body weight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so like you take your top set of what you've ever hit. Mm -hmm. And if he says like... Like say I've hit like 100 kilos of, for my squat, which mm -hmm. is pretty close to my top. Um, and 80% would be 80 kilos. Yeah. So... If I'm lifting, I'm lifting like 80 kilos for three reps, seven times, and that's just like a lot of heavy lifting. <laughs> yeah, that is a lot. Um, so that's like, that was like one of my movements within the workout. And then I also did benching and deadlifting that day. Mm -hmm. um, and there, it's not like every single movement has that many. It just is like on a given day, I'll do like a ton of this. And then maybe like half as much of the benching and like half as much as of the deadlifts. Mm -hmm. um, but it sort of like alternates depending on the day. Uh, and then he'll always give me like some accessory work to do as well, which kind of looks like um, sometimes it can be like upper body work, like uh, barbell rows or like something to work on like triceps. Mm -hmm. um, or it can be like single leg squats or some people call them like Bulgarian split squats. Yeah. Um, and so it just kind of is varied and I think he just picks things based on like what my weaknesses are and what he thinks will improve them. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's kind of like an, an average day is like either two or three of like these main movements of like squat, bench or deadlift and then a couple accessory workouts. Okay, nice. No, that's pretty solid. I think that's a pretty good routine overall. Mm -hmm. It's it sounds like the you're kind of doing like a, almost like a full body split on most days, like with the major movements. Yeah. Um, which I I like also kind of transitioned to because I like I at least want to try and work out three times a week during clinicals, and I feel like to have enough volume, you need to train like full body if you're only going three times a week because mm -hmm. when you're doing four you can think about splits at least with bodyweight training like i can target only my upper body and like back one day and then chest and legs another day but mm -hmm. i found with three days a week like full body is good for me and it sounds like that's kind of at least with the major lifts that's kind of what your program is um so what i just have like a couple questions left here um what are your goals moving forward like with powerlifting or fitness in general yeah so with powerlifting it's the type of thing where i really enjoy it i don't know if i'm gonna do it forever mm -hmm. um you know i thought i was gonna do crossfit forever and then here i am like a powerlifter <laughs> <laughs> and so in my mind i'm like i really want to like take my lifts like as far as they can go like I want to deadlift like over 300 pounds, which I'm not that far from, but that's like one of my goals at the moment is to get to 300 pound deadlift and then see how much further I can go with that and just mm -hmm. get these lifts pretty much like to what my, like what my body can handle. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how long I'm going to work on it. I think like wherever, wherever it takes me that's where I'll go like life life changes so much and I think you have to be adaptable to it because mm -hmm. um, I'm super happy I mean giving up CrossFit was really hard but I'm I enjoy powerlifting so much now that it's like I don't even think about how much I miss CrossFit <laughs> yeah nice that's pretty good yeah also 300 pound deadlift sounds like a lot <laughs> like because I, I mean I barely ever lift weights but I've done bench and I know like starting to get into the 200 range is extremely heavy. So 300 <laughs> sounds like a lot, um, but nice. How, how close are you? Like what are, what are your PRs for a deadlift? Yeah, the most, the most I've ever deadlifted is um, a little over 275 pounds. Dang, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's impressive actually. Thank you. <laughs> 
Uh, but I'm actually kind of transitioning at the moment because I just started learning how to do a sumo deadlift. Okay. And in the past, I've always done conventional. Mm, that's like the grip, right? It's sort of, it's how you're standing. So conventional, oh, okay. your feet are sort of like right next to each other, like right in the middle of the bar. Mm -hmm. um, and sumo is like your feet are sort of like towards the, pointing out towards the end of the bar. Um, kind of like in this like wide stance. Okay. Um, and I always like, I never thought I would do that. I was like sumo deadlifts, like that seems like that's crazy. <laughs> But then my coach was like, I really think we're gonna have you try it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's been incredible. Like I feel like I can lift more with them and it feels easier. Um, and I don't think, with, with my sumo deadlift, I don't think 300 is like far off at all from what I can do. Nice. Yeah, well 270, I mean, I know like when you get really high in weight, every little increment, like you can feel it. Yeah. But totally. Like, I mean, 30 pounds, that, that seems doable. Like, I feel like you'll be able to do it. Thank you. I hope so. Yeah. Okay. Last question I have for you is what advice would you give to a student who is potentially not struggling with school? Let's say like they're kind of fine with school, like as fine as we medical students can be, uh, but they're struggling with fitness though. Like they just either want to get stronger or like they want to lose weight or just be active overall like what advice would you if a student like that came up to you because that you know they saw that you train and stuff like what would you tell them i would say um that to stick with something and to get into fitness i think it's really important to have something that you enjoy mm -hmm. because like i said before uh, i always used to run and I always hated it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, it was a chore. And then after I found CrossFit and powerlifting, like exercise was fun and it was a hobby and it like became part of like who I am, I guess. Like I couldn't imagine my life not exercising. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think, I don't remember the last time I've gone a week without exercising. Uh, whereas in the past when I was just exercising like to lose weight or like um for whatever reason because i felt like i had to yeah i i would always go like through times like sometimes a month where i was like i don't want to exercise anymore because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's just easier it's really easy to brush it off if you're not if your heart's not in it and you're not enjoying it yeah for sure um but yeah like i i enjoy powerlifting like i have goals with powerlifting like of where I want to be by my next competition and then my next competition after that. So when you have these goals that you're like, you see them like far out of like, it's it's like a part of your life where I guess, um, it's hard to explain. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. Like I 100% agree with all of that. Like it's so, it's hard to go to the gym when you have like, superficial goals like sometimes the the superficial goals can get you into the gym like okay i want to lose this amount of weight i want to gain this amount of muscle but to build like true consistency like you have to actually like enjoy it and love mm -hmm. it like otherwise you're not going to go when you have zero motivation exactly all right well thank you so much for doing this this is awesome one thing i'm having people do at the very end is um kind of do this dumb thing where like you punch, pretend to punch the lens and say the word datebayo. Okay, which is let a, me uh, practice. It's, it's, a, it's a Japanese word that means believe it. Um, it's like how I end all my videos, so I've been having people end it that way too. I like it. So, okay, you're gonna like it's... punch the lens. You can get pretty close. Okay. And then you're gonna say datebayo. Okay, datebayo, that's how you say it? Yeah. Okay, datebayo.